there, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We are live. Uh, this is the Canadian Bowler Podcast. Uh, I'm Mike Petuli, uh, joined here today with Daryl Fitzgerald. How's it going, Daryl? Pretty good, Mike. How are you doing? Oh, bit of a crazy morning. Uh, <laughs> played in a tournament this weekend, so we uh, have our New Zealand mixed fives is what we call it. It's uh, essentially a tournament you get paired with a group of five people and then you split you up into triples and pairs. You play a couple of rounds over usually two days. So it's probably my favorite tournament of the year and it's about 35 degrees outside right now. So <laughs> uh, we started the game a little bit earlier than uh, we were expected to today. So that's kind of why we have a bit of a weird time here. Daryl accommodated the Saskatchewan people playing their bowls game early. So thank you, Daryl. No problem. Uh, glad to get a show in this weekend. We've got a bunch of stuff to talk about, um, Canada-wide and provincial uh, results and, and all that great stuff. So uh, even though we're at a later time, hopefully this uh, captures a whole bunch of people across the country. And uh, don't forget, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll leave Mike to do the intro because I'm terrible at it. Yeah. Uh, so. As Daryl said, like, comment, subscribe uh, if you can. Uh, any sort of subscriptions, uh, likes of the videos helps us out a lot. Just uh, gets our uh, videos into so people that want to be seeing Bulls content. Uh, so any sort of likes, comments, that's great. We've looked at the data. We got about a 5% subscribe rate. So most of the people who are watching our video are just here for a couple of minutes or maybe just a view or so. but. If you do hit that subscribe button, it helps us out a lot. So if you can, please hit that button and you can check us out on any of our social media handles there. If you uh, aren't able to check the show out here today, you can also check us out on any major podcast platforms. Uh, we'll be on there usually within a day or two of the show. So, Daryl. I just wanted to mention, uh, you were, you're talking about the, uh, the audio podcast. I just wanted to mention that... Um, the audio podcast has been doing really well as well. I think we we cracked 750 uh, downloads for all of our stuff, and we're striving to hit that uh, thousand downloads uh, part. I know people are listening to this on Apple Podcasts, uh, Google Podcasts, whatever that you uh, listen to, and we appreciate that as well. Um, every little bit, like Mike said, that help um, that you listen to us, you like subscribe you do all that kind of stuff facebook youtube instagram uh twitter everything helps and uh, we're trying to make this show as big as we possibly can uh reach as many people as we can and every single one of those things just makes that possible okay so i think the first uh order of events we wanted to talk about daryl is the provincial results or I guess we can call it provincial results, sort of the getting going all across Canada. There's quite a bit of bowling in all the different provinces going on at this point. Um, like specifically for me, I know Saskatchewan, we've we've ran our own version of provincials. Uh, we're about halfway or two, two thirds of the way through them at this point. So they kind of did a split between the north and the south in Saskatchewan and next weekend is the beginning of the actual provincial championship so the north is going to play the south so pretty excited to watch that we got pretty much all of them kind of in a row there singles pairs and uh i guess it'd be mixed pairs so all three of them will be kind of around in a couple of days and then i think if you were uh informing me correctly i think we have on or uh, alberta sorry is running their provincials this weekend uh because they had had to delay them it sounded like due to the air quality from all the forest fires so i know alberta's getting going this week and they've ran their seniors and i believe mixed pairs earlier as well so quite a bit of bowling has been going on there the last little while yeah no you're right um alberta's currently in the the pairs uh portion of their event and i know that they had to suddenly stop um the event this weekend uh, because of that air quality issue, which is really unfortunate, but um, that's going on, and it looks like they have um, like nine teams on the women's side for pairs and two pools, so I think 11 total teams on the men's side, which is awesome. That's really, really good to see. And um, you were talking about Saskatchewan, so I can just run down some of those results. Um, 
So North and South playdown. So South women's pairs: Jean Roney and Jordan Koss, uh, Heather Hanoski and Anita uh, Navala. And on the South men's pairs: Carter Watson and Brandon Watson, Keith Roney and uh, Brian McMillan. For the North, North women's pairs: Eileen McClellan and Rachel Larson, um, Maureen Strenhan and Kathy Grant. I'm probably going to butcher some of these names. Uh, North men's pairs, Doug Prop and Owen Wright, and Ryan Davis and Cam McClelland. So congratulations to those pairs teams. And on the mixed pairs side, um, the North had Eileen and Cam McClelland, uh, Lori DeBrowney and Viv Immelman. And on the south was Carter Watson and Jordan Koss and John Petuli. I don't know who John Petuli is, but John Petuli and Harriet Petuli, those people, they made it through. I don't know how, but there you go. Fun story. I was supposed to be uh, Jonathan Petuli that weekend, but my <laughs> beautiful daughter decided she wanted to come into the world uh, about 10 or 12 days early. So um, we uh, had to do a, a 180 there on, I think it was a Friday morning or Thursday afternoon, we did we determined that I wasn't able to play, so my brother stepped in, and they obviously did well enough that they're <laughs> they're playing next weekend there. So, congrats to them. That's awesome, and I'm I'm really happy to see a lot of this stuff going on in the provinces. Um, for you guys out there listening to us, and um, across every province, if you have results, um, send us. The results send us the link send us uh, information uh, we try to go out and and source all this information ourselves but sometimes it's hard to find or sometimes stuff isn't posted where we think it's going to be posted so let us know because we want to shout out all your champions all your uh, competitors that are going into uh, your provincial finals all that great stuff so please uh, just let us know us uh, in ontario there daryl like uh, i think i was seeing a couple tournaments were played just yesterday or the, the last few days. So has Ontario sort of opened up to full-blown tournaments at this point, or what are they doing for sort of provincials per se? Um, a lot of the, the clubs are doing scaled down events. Um, I don't know if um, everybody is super comfortable yet in, in coming out, especially with all the stuff that's been going on in Ontario with lockdowns and kind of flip-flopping back and forth. But um, tournaments have been going on and the, the posting and the information that I see coming from the clubs and the people involved say that they've all been run really well. Um, a lot of them have been full, so people have been excited to get out and actually compete. And uh, it looks like Ontario is going to keep going that way and things are going to be still open. More tournaments are going to be run. I know, for instance, my club is running a couple more events before the season uh, officially winds down. So that's that's really really positive. Considering um, probably a couple of weeks ago we weren't quite sure if if we were actually going to make it this far. Right. Yeah. No. That's any steps good to kind of move forward there. That's why I had to ask you because I wasn't a hundred percent sure, but I was pretty sure on my Facebook I was seeing a couple different results from different tournaments in Ontario and. Uh, obviously, if you guys are getting back to sort of the normal tournament schedule, it's pretty jam-packed there for Ontario in the August oh, yeah. season. So it'll be good to see a couple tournaments and all the results coming through here. Well, in Ontario, I think because of our uncertainty, we didn't actually um, plan out provincials like you guys are playing. You have the North and South, and then you have the provin like provincial champion. Um, Ontario is doing more of a... Uh, return to Bulls event. I think it's called Back to Bulls. And they're running it at a club that can accommodate as many people as they can. Um, actually, two clubs. So they're going to try to split it so people can um, enter whether they're in one side of Ontario or the other because it's such a big distance. And basically, it's it's not a provincial per se, as you would expect. It's more of a just a big festival event where people can come, sign up with whoever they want, um, and compete in all the events across a bunch of days. So it's looking like it's going to be really, really fun, um, but not necessarily the typical provincial that you would, you would actually think. Well, that's a good idea. Like the, the Bulls festivals have always been a 
popular thing like i know the australian open they essentially run that almost as a festival and kind of the description you gave me there if they're running it over a week or a weekend whatever it might be it sounds like it could be almost a festival of, sh of sorts so that actually sounds like a really nice uh, format for them to be trying out should be fun yeah absolutely uh yes, if we're going yeah go ahead john <laughs> in the chat there John in the chat. Uh, Nova Scotia just finished up our mixed triples provincial event. Uh, Steve Ogden, Steve Bazanson, and Lorraine Bazanson won the title. Uh, 13 to 9 today in the final at Wanderers Grounds. Uh, and John's team got fourth. So congratulations to uh, the Bazansons and uh, Steve Ogden. Uh, Steve, the two Steves, I'll say, um, definitely <laughs> have played a lot together. So it's not surprising that they, they did so well in that event. Yeah, two, two quality guys have played together for many, many years, won many, many championships, so not too surprising to see their names uh, potentially at the top there of a tournament out in Nova Scotia. A uh, question for John out there. If if you can tell us what it's like out there in Nova Scotia, I've seen you post pictures about um, events that you've been to or going to clubs. Has it basically opened up? Or are you guys still kind of playing it safe and, and only a few things are going on? Just let us know in the chat uh, and we'll, we'll definitely shout you out when, when we can. Um, so I guess kind of leading into one of our other topics we want to get into, I guess if we're talking about tournaments that have been happening, Phoenix happened, uh, Phoenix Bowls happened last weekend there. So I was able to watch a bit of the stream that uh, went on there and I was able to kind of get information from you and Luke and my other friends that were playing in the tournament. So it looked like that was quite a, a fun event, very interesting format to, to try out or to see people play. So how was, uh, how was your experience there last weekend, Daryl? It was, it was pretty awesome. Um, to be perfectly honest, that was the actual first event or even social thing that I've done where it was a lot of people, um, like not out to a patio where it's like, one table or just a couple people um, so it I was a little apprehensive going in I wasn't sure what it's gonna be like you know are people gonna be trying to come up and you know shake my hand and give me hugs or, or do all that kind of stuff and you know make things uncomfortable but it was actually really really good um, everybody was super respectful of uh, people's space and the rules and following things and the event itself was really cool it took a while for everybody to get used to it. They had markers for every green, and they were learning the game and the point system. You had people uh, trying to keep up with all the points that are going on because every bowl potentially could get you points. Um, and even me, when I was streaming it, uh, trying to keep up with what was going on and call out touchers and three points here and five points here and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it was interesting. But overall, the event was awesome. I think it was a really successful first shot at it. And I'm really excited to see what the the more robust and uh, I'm sure all a bunch of the teams are coming back, but the championship event that's going to be happening shortly will be like. Um, for this event, I'll just uh, give you the the final rundown. Semifinal number one was uh, uh, Mark Sanford and Steve McCarahan versus Carrie uh, and Mark Lucier, uh, and Carrie and Mark Lucier won 58-50. Uh, the second semifinal was Mike and Bob Bester versus uh, Derek McKay and Mike Spadafora. And the Bester uh, father and son team won 57 54. So that was really close. <laughs> and then the final was uh, uh, Mark and Kerry uh, Lucier and, uh, versus uh, Mike and Bob Bester. And that. <laughs> Uh, that was only one point, so it was 59-58, and uh, Kerry and Mark Lucier won that. So really, really good games. The greens were great. The weather was great. We, we had a downpour in the middle, but after that and before that, it was perfect. So uh, really, really good good event. Well run. So. Yeah, those are crazy close games. Like for <laughs> semifinals and finals, when you said those scores with how many points flip hands in that game, I... That's those are shockingly close games. So, looked like like the the few ones uh, that you posted to the channel there for that one round looked like it was very nice uh, to watch the different format. I found it kind of refreshing to see the high scores and kind of the different way of playing it because a lot of the times it was interesting to see a team maybe get 
shot, but then if they were didn't have second and third shot, then you're almost having an even evening out in the points. So the point format's quite interesting to kind of see how it can re- almost reward a team that maybe is giving up that one shot bowl every point or every end, but then they're constantly being close or constantly doing well, and then maybe just the scorecard doesn't, the typical scorecard, I guess, doesn't maybe reward them sometimes. So uh, I enjoyed watching it, and I'm very much looking forward to the next event there where hopefully you guys get around the same or more entries and maybe grow it from there and see some some different <laughs> bowls. <laughs> Uh, streaming product down the line it's it's exciting honestly i just lo- want to see the that event again and maybe get a little more streams on our end <laughs> the the streaming was the challenge uh i'll be perfectly honest with that we got those three games in um and then before and after it was uh just so difficult to try to get it to run so we we took a huge amount of learning from that we've we've got some solutions i think that we're gonna um make it better and hopefully by that championship uh, event, we'll be able to stream hopefully the bulk of games, including the finals, um, when those come around. So we, fingers crossed, things go well, and uh, we can get rid of all the little kinks and and stream a really, really good event for you guys on the channel. It, it was great to see people come in and, and chat, so we really want to keep that up. Yeah, like you were getting uh, pretty good, I guess, comments and everything like that from people all across the world honestly you were seeing i think australia lots of people from europe yeah. so it was a nice group of people that were coming in to to view the game so i think if we can iron out those things that we were talking about uh, off the air me and you and and luke we we might uh, be able to get some as you say a bulk of the games in there and hopefully get quite a bit of that next tournament on the on the channel here that's that's the plan and i can i can honestly say um, it would, Andy said it was stressful. It was stressful. I was uh, losing my mind trying to get stuff going and, and keep it going and uh, keep the streams um, up for you guys. Um, so hopefully it's a lot less stress the next time because we've learned a lot. It was, and it was really great. Burlington was awesome. Um, the organizers, uh, uh, Rob Gallopo and his family um, of the event w- were awesome. They helped as much as they could gave us all the support that um, that we wanted and uh, couldn't really ask for a better event to, to kick that off and hopefully down the road we'll be able to do more streaming and more events and really showcase uh, some of these um, really cool and neat events that are going on in every province and bring it to you guys. Yeah, the, the new and different events are fun events to honestly stream or get out there just because I think we do need some new stuff or new ideas in the game. And I feel that this is honestly a great direction that they've they've gone their UBC or Phoenix Bulls because it's really something that's never been tried and it's a very different uh, type of play. So I'm excited to see where it goes in the future there. Yeah, I'm excited. So we'll see. Sure. So we got a few comments there in the chat. Uh, John Seitman came back and he pretty much answered your question. So he said, they're back to pretty much an essential normal with full capacity bowls, uh, full schedule provincial tournaments up to the first week of October, uh, singles, pairs, fours in September. So uh, Nova Scotia looks like they're pretty much moving forward as normal, which doesn't surprise me considering what I've been seeing out of there posts of just the different events and provincial events they've or i guess just tournaments that they're running so that doesn't terribly surprise me uh we also got sydney lawn bowling club saying uh they're limiting games to just general own club for now they're bowling seven days a week so sounds like they're kind of back to normal but again if they're limiting games just to their club maybe not having those uh inter-club games or maybe the whole island wide games type of thing obviously that's gonna be a little restricted but kind of bowling like normal and then gary i guess popped in there so saskatchewan's running provincial events uh not the true provincials chance to play some competitive bowls so pretty much what we covered there at the front of the hour was gary uh i guess gary was in the senior final uh, on tuesday or wednesday of this week we didn't cover that in our results portion so gary's team i think finished second in our senior championship that we held so it was 
him. Uh, th- I'm trying to even remember who his team was right now. I think it's him, Cam McClelland, and uh, Jerry, but uh, they ended up losing to David Calum, uh, Doug Normand, and Pat Schlaughter from Regina here. So, yeah, good good to see the provincials and all the different things going on across the country so that we actually have some new bowls and some new events to, to touch on here on the show. Oh, it's great. And... Um everybody in chat thank you for uh for posting something we really really want to know what's going on out there in, in every province it's not always um in your face from the provincial websites or facebook or or people posting so uh you guys coming on and, and letting us know what's going on so we can discuss it is it's exactly what we want um i wanted to quickly uh just go back to the phoenix um it was really, really great to see people coming in and seeing the streams and, and looking at it. Um, I'm hoping other people can go onto our channel and take a look at those posts, those events, uh, or the, the videos that we posted of the past event. Let us know what you think. Um, camera angles, obviously the sound quality was a little iffy on the Facebook. We'll, f- we'll fix that, but the YouTube should be okay. Um, what do you thought of the scoreboard, the uh, the stuff that we had going on, um, commentary, because we just want to keep building and building and getting better. So all of the feedback, all of the comments that you guys give us, we're going to take and we're going to try to make better. So um, feedback is much appreciated. Yeah, I know you'll take any of the information we can get to, to help us get us get better there. And as you're saying, like, if they want to critique sort of the commentary or any of the graphics we have, make the scoreboard bigger, uh, have more descriptions of the the rules that are in play, anything anything like that, just we'll take anything into consideration and sort of incorporate it if we can, because anything to make it a better experience for people viewing is really all we're after here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I guess moving on, we can uh, quickly touch on one of the things that's coming out of Bulls Canada. Um, for those of you out there that don't know or don't look at the Bulls Canada website, um, Bulls Canada is looking for uh, new board members and new committee members. So if you're out there and you want to make a difference in Bulls, you want to be part of the national program, um, help with the direction that Bulls is going at the top level around Canada, go and take a look at uh, BullsCanada.com. In the news articles, there's a call for the Strategic Planning Committee, which is really important, and also for uh, board members uh, to get nominated. So if you're looking for something to do, if you're looking to be a part of Bulls and make a difference, um, Bulls Canada is looking for you guys. So go out, check it out, and uh, hopefully we get a, a bunch of people applying. Yeah, it's, I saw the couple different posts this week from Bolt Canada, always trying to get different people or new blood, I guess, in on the, the board of directors because anyone who's tried it before or has new ideas, it's always great to give that a shot because if you do have some new ideas that you want to try and get happening in lawn bowling in Canada or if you want to make some changes, it it is honestly the best way to do it is if you can get on a board of directors and sort of get your your ideas across to different people and sort of work with like-minded people or people that want to better the game in Canada. So board of directors is always a, a good idea to think about. Uh, like I, I know the strategic committee is also an important part because they definitely kind of work out the strategy or what idea we're going to actually move towards for bulls in the country. So I know they they, ho- they have a very important part as well. Um, something I've considered myself applying for just because I have a little, some out there ideas or uh, different ideas than a lot of people when it comes to what we could do to improve bulls or sort of change it. And so I know it's something I've kind of kicked the tires or thought about is that strategic committee because I know they, they do a lot of work and they do some important work to try and change things up in Canada. Like, I, I guess if we're going with some of these out there ideas that, that Mike has <laughs> for the strategic committee, I got a question for you, Daryl. All right. So my observation for 
Bulls Canada. Uh, we always have all these programs trying to recruit sort of the youth and sort of moving in the more youthful direction for Bulls. Question I've always kind of had, lawn bowling has the stigma that we unfortunately fight, which is it's an old person's sport. However, we don't really recruit actively the elderly. And I feel that that's a huge demographic that we've been losing out on as a lawn bowling sport. Like we don't have uh, sponsorships or I guess partnerships with say like nursing homes per se, or like assisted living facilities, things like that, where maybe if we kind of actively start partnering with that elderly crowd that was and is a huge part of the community, there's probably still an opportunity for more growth. and. Personally, I just haven't really seen any programs or initiatives from Bulls Canada myself. So I was wondering what your thought is about that direction of sort of not actively going after sort of the the elderly crowd or maybe recruiting kind of everyone in sort of a limited focus on kind of the youthful side of the game. So I, I know a lot of the programs coming out um, from Bulls Canada, at least in the past leading up to now, have been... Um, well, some of them have been youth-oriented or novice-oriented towards those uh, young people that are just learning the game. It, it's interesting that you you point out um, that we're not actively recruiting um, the seniors. So let's say past retirement, we're, we're actually talking about people that have been retired for a while and are in that seniors category. Um, at a national level and at a overall level, um, I can't... I can't argue with you, you there. I see um, various clubs partner with um, either some long-term care facilities or retirement living places for tournaments, but it's not really actively publicized. So at the tournament, you'll hear, hey, we're sponsored by this retirement facility, but there's nothing that grows from there. Um, it's interesting. I, I don't know how you how you build a marketing for both sides. I think possibly it's building up the marketing for one and then moving over and building up the marketing for the other. Um, what are your ideas for, for something like that? Like, like for me, I, I feel there just needs to be more of an emphasis, emphasis to try and retain and recruit that elderly generation. I know we've kind of, <laughs> I guess, shied away from it. And it, it has reasoning like the we've always fought the stigma of the whites only in very kind of strict rules. And I feel like that's kind of scaled back in the last little while. But specifically, like, in my opinion, with like the baby boomer generation starting to kind of hit that retirement age and be sort of in that full retirement age, I feel that there's going to be a huge influx of sort of that retirement age type of people mm -hmm. and those are kind of like the bread and butter per se of a lawn bowling club where volunteerism is such a huge part of the lawn bowling club and how it runs and how it operates and if you can get 10 20 people that are that retirement age and they're willing to volunteer help out sort of do those things that you need to have around the club i feel it's a really important part of the club and kind of what you're saying with the marketing and the development, I feel there needs to almost be a direct program trying to recruit essentially that generation because it it would be a huge part of a lot of clubs to sort of keep them running, get those new members, sort of keep that infrastructure of the balance, I guess, that you have where you maybe you have those younger members, those maybe those working age type of members, but then sort of those younger retirement age members, I feel kind of the combo of all of them together are needed to really have a fully successful club. Uh, that makes sense. I mean, um, the backbone of any club that I've seen um, are those that have the time, and it's not the working uh, people. It's mostly the retired people who are looking to fill some of that time, are willing to do the jobs out there like um, maintain your green. So the verticutting and the trimming and the raking of grass and all that stuff and maintaining the clubhouse and running the tournaments and running stuff during the day because who else is going to be there during the day to actually run your events um, so it's an it, excellent point I don't know uh, what kind of programs you could build but I think the biggest bang for your buck for any club and 
the easier people to, to pull in and to keep are probably that age and beyond. Whereas I think you and I have both seen it when we were growing up and um, trying to recruit younger people. You get some of them, you don't get a whole lot of them. Um, it's really, really tough to not only get them in as a group, but to keep them. Uh, usually it's the most hardcore that keep going. So like you and John have a family connection, so you've maintained it through the whole time. But getting those people that don't have the family connection necessarily and don't have some ties to it, it's extremely difficult. Right. Yeah, like I think the, the one thing that maybe a focus should be pushed towards is is getting the more social side of the membership there. So for these people that were maybe actively recruiting, trying to focus on, I think the membership idea doesn't mesh with a lot of people nowadays. They don't like to commit to having to pay X hundred dollars and then for an entire summer. A lot of people like to maybe play in league formats or more limited memberships. And so I think maybe a program where Bulls Canada is actively pushing having essentially social or social memberships where it's one day a week where maybe they make a, as I say, a partnership with some sort of a seniors community and they bring them in one day a week and they kind of have a social tea or something after they're done. Something along those lines, I feel if they kind of push that idea of a social membership across the country, it's probably going to bring in a lot of more of the casual people, the kind of just out there for fun people but you do need that part of the membership in order to have a successful sport so that's sort of I guess my idea that I would maybe run by a lot of clubs in a lot of areas is try and push that social side of the sport because really that was what lawn bowling started out of is it was a very social sport back 70s 80s type of a range the sponsorships from like Tetley T and all those different companies it was a very much go play your two-hour game in the afternoon at the park and then have a tea and sort of sit there and socialize with your friends so i i think if we kind of kind of push towards back that direction that's sort of all i'm looking for or wanting to potentially happen that's interesting it's definitely worth a discussion um i think some of the stuff we brought up here on the channel like the membership model not being the best way to go to like you just said you know, maybe the casual um, league, quote unquote, membership, or uh, where you come in and you play once a week um, for X number of weeks, and then, like you said, I, I think the social the social part is the part that's missing at a lot of clubs. Um, I know for my club, it took a long time, and, and it's only the last, I'll say, five years, let's say, that people actually stay after the game and have a drink or have a coffee and, and talk. It's it's always been a struggle to keep people there. It's usually, hey, I come, I drop my bowls, you know, have a fun time while I'm there and then pick up my bowls and leave. And and that's it. So I think the, the social part is missing in a lot of clubs and a lot of events. And I think that is something that we can really, really look at building up to, to make our sport a lot better. Right, yeah. The social side really needs to be kind of hand in hand with bowls. I I, I, f I really believe that like Jitney is what we do here in Regina. We have it on every Friday night and it's essentially bowls with the food afterwards. But the rest of the day for Regina, every single day of the week, there's no any sort of social aspect after the games. So I kind of think membership wise, it's you almost have to make a Jitney night. You have to make just those focus nights where you're focusing on the social part of the sport, getting the, the friendships, building the clubs, kind of camaraderie, everything like that. Um, I guess we're reading the chat. We got Sydney Lawn Bowling Club. They're commenting that they have a Thursday donuts, Friday pizza, and then Sunday's tea. So again, formats like that, I actually enjoy where you're at. That, that would promote the social side of things where you're going to get the people in there. So uh, that's just me with my sort of outside the box thinking, I guess, where I'm trying to promote ideas that are they're kind of out there, but I think it's almost you have to have a national sort of focus on it or platform to try and direct clubs to more heavily lean towards things like that. And if we if we keep talking about stuff like this on the channel, if our wonderful viewers are putting in the chat what they're doing and, and how they're doing, 
I think we'll just slowly, slowly open people's eyes to maybe what they can do or th avenues that they can go down to, to really try to recruit and retain um, people. We're happy to have discussions and debates. So, I mean, Mike and I are always going to see eye to eye on things. And same with Luke and, and everybody in chat. If you have things you want to discuss, if you have topics that you think uh, we should bring up on the show, you know, hit us up on our socials. Uh, even hit us up on email, you know, canadianlongbowler at gmail.com. Send those things to us and, and put them in the chat. We love to hear from you. We want uh, to have a lot of these topics that we can openly discuss, get ideas, and we may not solve the world's problems, but at least we can discuss them and open uh, people's eyes to them and really have a, a productive debate about it. Yeah, like that's one of the main reasons we have this channel here is we want to get new ideas out there, work on trying to move the game forward in any way possible. And one of the best ways to do that is honestly through dialogue and discussion. So me and you obviously might see very different on how things could be marketed to the game of bulls. But when you have those different ideas and you sort of mesh them together, sometimes when you speak with other people and get their personal experiences or what they've done at their club, it really does uh, allow ideas to travel and get different ideas out there. So we're more than open to talk about pretty much anything people want us to talk about and anything we can do to really try and develop the game here in the country. And as always, we're, we're really happy to have you guys around. Uh, Sydney Lombowing Club is saying, you know, we invite everybody to join the Sydney Lombowing Club Facebook page. And on that note, don't forget to follow, like, like this video, the little thumb that's below uh, us on YouTube. Subscribe. It's really easy to subscribe. All you need is uh, an email. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, let us know you're out there and you like this content. Every subscription, every like means so much to us. And it helps us uh, bring more content to you. We know what you like. We know what you don't like. We know that you're out there listening to us. And we can continue doing this kind of stuff uh, for you guys and for the sport and really, really promote it. So everybody that's done it already, thank you very much. Everybody that hasn't, you know, it's it's free, it's easy. Just click that thumb or click that bell and click that subscribe and and it's perfect. Like, uh, reading the chat there, Daryl, I see Gary's comment. I guess it's something I've never talked to you about, but I had kind of gotten wind of it in Saskatchewan here. So Prince Albert National Park is in northern Saskatchewan. Uh, they have an old bull's green there. I've never personally seen it, but I know it's there. And kind of the weird of what's happening now is they're actually redeveloping it and they're building a new one. Oh, wow. So that's what Gary was commenting. And uh, the Regina Lawn Bowling Club actually uh, donated, uh, I think it was 20 sets of bulls to them so that they have kind of an active set of, or a decent size inventory of bulls uh, i guess at this point so it's a very beautiful park uh waska Sioux is kind of one of the top areas that people want to go in saskatchewan it's a really nice uh vacation destination and if you're ever in saskatchewan i'd highly recommend it it's a beautiful place and that bulls green is pretty much right in the center of that town that they have in prince albert national park so it's a great location, and I think having the bulls supplied from Regina Lawn Bowling Club, having the club right there in the middle of a very high traffic area, I think it's going to be a great thing if they can kind of revitalize it because any sort of high traffic area, as we've noticed with a lot of lawn bowling clubs, if you're in a high traffic area, people peek over a fence, and <laughs> if it's pretty open to try, they'll, they'll step out there and they'll try it, and sometimes you get those people that get hooked. So hopefully when they get that green developed, I'll definitely go take a look at it next year because my wife's family is from up in northern Saskatchewan. So maybe we'll have a video or something for the channel next year if I head up to northern Saskatchewan and take some video of the new green once it's developed. Nice. We don't often hear, especially in Canada, uh, new greens being uh, either developed or resurfaced or uh, you know, revitalized. So um, that's great to hear. And uh, I would really, I mean, I love national parks. So uh, if I'm ever in Saskatchewan, I'll definitely want to go and check that out. Uh, along with coming and seeing you guys down in 
and then Regina as well. Um, was it North Vancouver that just moved? And uh, so they've moved from their old location to a new one and are completely artificial, I believe, now? Yeah. So yeah, they, lots of cool stuff going on. Yeah, they hosted the juniors like maybe five years ago or something like that. And back when I was of that age, so I remember I played there and it was a really nice club. And I think they hosted the Nationals a couple of years before that too. So they recently got moved. Like I have them on Facebook and kind of followed that progress. And I think it was just last week or a couple of weeks ago, it looked like they got the go ahead to start playing on the new artificial surfaces. So as you're saying, any sort of development or changing up of greens is always exciting to see. And specifically in that Vancouver area, if you can get those artificials, like they're pretty much usable 10 to 12 months a year. So it's a pretty, pretty good thing if you can get those artificial services. Cause I can remember when I lived there the one year I played three or four times in the de like December and February in Richmond, like, uh, in Van essentially greater Vancouver area so hopefully the the new surface works well for them and the new the new location of the club also uh, does well for the new club that's really cool so Jane uh, Jane said yes so um, Jane I don't know if you've played on there or if anybody else in chat has played uh, or rolled a bowl on the new surface if you have let us know what it's like uh, let us know what you think of the change and if you have pictures uh, I know there's pictures out there of of stuff that was done in the construction and whatnot, but if you have any pictures of it, send it our way and, and we'll be happy to post them for you guys. So, John's uh, commenting in the chat there. So he's saying they hosted the juniors in 2016. Uh, he's reminiscing about our final round of the round robin game. Uh, he can't wait for our next rematch. I still remember that game as well. I believe every year he shares a photo on Facebook and it looks like he's <laughs> levitating or hovering above the green. Uh, I still very, very much remember him making that shot because he jumped very high and got very excited because it was quite a nice shot. So yes, fond memories from the old North Vancouver uh, long bowling greens. I've seen that uh, picture, so I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yep, I remember the moment because he made a shot that We'll, we'll call it fortunate, but it was still a nice shot. He got a little bit of a rub, but he made a very nice shot with the rub, and it worked out quite well for him. So, but yes, question I have reading, or I guess our discussion here, Daryl, uh, artificial or natural green, what is your preference? What do you think is the better of the two? I, okay, I prefer natural. Um, obviously, we have every range of natural green here in Canada where you've got stuff that your bowl will disappear halfway through the green and then appear again because of the humps. Uh, you've got really nice greens that are true, like say Calgary Lawn Bowls, uh, Lawn Bowling Club. They're supposed to have excellent greens. I always prefer to play on natural. Carpet is interesting and I don't mind it, but if I had the choice, I'd play on um, on natural. Let's, let's say Brad Beach. Uh, obviously my favorite. I think they have the best greens, natural greens that I've ever seen. If I could play on those every day versus artificial, I'd play on those every day. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, it's, I, I think most people kind of have that same opinion yourself uh, where natural is kind of the, the go-to. I know some people like the idea of the artificial, but I know there's lots of maintenance involved with sort of keeping them flat. You have to water them yeah. to sort of keep them stretched. It, it's a lot of work with artificial greens, but it's always an interesting topic to see because I, I know there are people that really enjoy artificial surfaces. Like I've, uh, as you're sort of saying, I've played on pretty much any type of artificial surface that you can play on very fast, even slow ones. Like I played in the Dutch Open in uh, the Netherlands and they had a very slow artificial surface, like maybe 11 seconds type of a thing. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely a variance and the underlays make such huge, huge difference on what you're going to get. But it's always a, a fun topic to see what someone says, because I know some people really hate artificials and some people love them. So I'll be perfectly honest. Um, in the artificials that I've played in and around, say, Ontario and Canada, I've never played on a really good one, like one that I can say, yeah, this one's excellent. Uh, there's always issues, there's always problems with underlay, you know, you get caught in a, a weird ridge, and on artificial it's unforgiving. 
um, because of the speed and, and the way it goes. So if I got to play on a really excellent one outdoors, that might change my mind. But right now I haven't played on a really, really good one where I've actually played on excellent outdoor ones. Yeah, like the indoor indoor artificial is about the only one I think I've played yeah. on that kind of universally has draw lines for any type of bowls. When I can remember one year at nationals, I think it was in Winnipeg, my brother and me played one of the end rinks on the Winnipeg artificial, and John's Taylor Aces would literally hold and just stay on a ridge, or they would swing across the head. Yeah. So. We had a very lopsided game that match. I can still remember it because to this day, I've never had my brother more frustrated when we were playing pairs. So, yeah, it's, as you're saying, very much unforgiving when you play on artificial greens uh, compared to a, a natural surface. Yeah. Speed doesn't always make it better, um, even on natu uh, natural greens. I love when people say, you know, oh, we're going to ramp this up to 15, 16 seconds and, you know, dry it out and, and it'll be awesome. Well, if your draw isn't true and you have terrible ridges and you have terrible bumps and the greens are all over the place, speed's only going to make it worse. So uh, it, it's, a, it's a balancing act of speed versus uh, draw that you need to do to get that really nice, uh, even ground, I guess. Yeah. No, it's. I think any sort of green, if you don't have a good underlay or sort of you have those ridges or bumps, whatever you're going to call them, you're going to have problems fast or slow. So definitely a, a balancing act. Um, got some comments in the chat. So uh, Jane Boyd commented just about the Facebook progress that sort of me and you both were watching with North Fan. I. I can confirm that it looks like they're currently using a C can or something like that as their clubhouse. So I think the clubhouse is still under construction. So that's something that we can probably get some updates on as they go along. Cause I imagine maybe by the end of the, the summer here or early next year, they might have that, that, that clubhouse constructed. Um, John Seitman also commented, he, uh, he thinks personally it all depends on the quality of the surface. Uh, he's from a carpet club, is his main club, so Dartmouth out there in Nova Scotia. Um, and then his, he says it helps to build your knowledge base. And so, yeah, definitely if you play on an artificial all the time, you're going to probably get more used to it and know what you have to do in certain scenarios. And says that he's getting a new green at the end of the month. So that's pretty exciting if they're getting a new surface or maybe a new carpet out there in Dartmouth. John, make sure to, to fix that... Uh... There's a green one right near the club where the burst pipe was, and there's a ridge. So, you know, a new a new carpet's not going to fix that. So. <laughs> I'm sure they'll fix it. I'm uh, sure it'll be fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, I guess the other one we got is Jane Boyd was also commenting about the artificial greens, uh, sometimes emitting sort of a chemical smell during the high heat. And yes, I would uh, honestly agree with that. I remember playing, I think it's at Willowdale that has the artificial in Toronto. Yeah. And we were playing on a really warm day once at Nationals and definitely has a bit of a, a chemical or kind of a weird smell. I, I can't even pinpoint. I, I would agree with what she's saying, though. That's a, a, a tough, tough smell to pinpoint what exactly it is. But yes, definitely a downfall of, I guess, playing on an, an artificial on a very warm day. Yeah. Alrighty. So is there anything else you wanted to sort of chat about here today, Daryl? Um, yeah, I'm going to throw something out there. Uh, this is for myself. Um, obviously, uh, having a kid has changed my perspective on a few things. And um, I've noticed over the pandemic that my fitness, my health, my weight has gone all over the place. And I am saying it out to the... The general public here and to you mike and to luke if he if he's listening to this i'm going to be putting a challenge to myself to drop 20 pounds i don't have a specific end date for it but i want to come on here and i'll give you updates on how it's going i've started today uh going uh, because i i didn't have to do a, a podcast early in the morning um, I took little Ethan out in the stroller and, and did a walk around uh, our area for about a half an hour, and I'm just going to keep ramping it up from there. 
Um, I'm going to be uh, attacking the free weights. I'm going to be trying to put on a little uh, muscle as well and hopefully get my health back to where it should be. Um, I've just felt run down the last little while, especially over the pandemic. I've put on weight. I can feel it. When I walk around, I hate the jiggles. So um, I'm going to see what I can do about that. But I just want to make myself accountable. Have you guys make me accountable uh, for doing this. And I'm going to be doing my best to shed some weight, put on a little muscle, make myself feel better. And like I say to my players when I'm coaching, you know, fitness means everything. Stamina means everything when you're playing bowls. And I should actually be walking the walk, not just talking the talk. So um, I've got my fitness watch on. I haven't cracked this out in since the beginning pandemic, I think. So away we go. That's my, my big announcement for, for me. I'm going to try to get my health back in order and see where we can go. Good on you, Daryl. That's uh, <laughs> honorable to to make that. I, I'm I've got the jiggles going too, so I know all about what you're you're saying. I was I was doing pretty good before they locked everything down here in Saskatchewan. Like I was going to the gym probably three four days a week, and I really dislike having to wear a mask with my beard when I run. So that was kind of where I drew the line as I stopped it then. And I know the jiggles have definitely snuck up on me. So. I'll maybe join you on that because we each got a young kid. I'll maybe strap Winnie to my chest and go to a go take some walks because you because you know that's that's a free weight too, Daryl. You just gotta get the the baby harness and take Ethan out on your chest to you know, work, get some more core resistance going. Oh yeah, uh, he's definitely weighing a lot more now, so uh, that'll definitely put a lot more weight on my runs or or doing work around the house. So. I, I, yeah, I, I just felt that it was about time that I got back on it. Um, I mean, I hit 40. I know it's not super old for some people, but I feel old and washed out and, uh, you know, that I'm, I'm lagging behind all the younger people playing this game. So uh, I want to get back to that level where I'm feeling good. Uh, I know I can uh, actively play this game at a high level and um, really just generally feel great and, like you said, from for our kids, um, you know, having us there, being able to play with them and do all the kind of stuff that uh, they want to do, without me throwing my back out or you know blowing out a knee or something like that, that's important. So, yeah, no, I think I'll probably join you on that that quest for improving the the personal health. Just I, I would agree with you; it's an important thing, and the pandemic I think has taken a toll on a lot of people. I, the term I hear is COVID twenty. I know a lot of people have and honestly put on probably about 20 pounds because of it so let's we'll push each other every time we're together here on the channel i'll, I'll make a mental note here to, to see what the progress is uh from team daryl and we'll see <laughs> where right. team mike falls and we'll keep it going awesome yeah other than that i don't have anything else i don't think yeah i think that that about covers it i think we had some some good conversations there so i'm happy with that Perfect. Okay, and just one more reminder, if you can, hit that like, comment, hit the follow button, whatever you can do. Any sort of any sort of uh, interaction helps us out there. So if you can, just hit that button. And with that, hope that uh, all your bowls are touchers. Have a good day.